Hey guys, Nikola here. Recently, news came out that NBA organizations Golden State Warriors, Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Houston Rockets have all obtained a spot in the North American League of Legends Championship Series. And the reason I'm making this video is not to break the news. That has already been done. Instead, I'm here to talk to you more about how and why this is happening. You know, not too long ago, mainstream sports owners and people associated with these kind of organizations were mad that people were calling video games eSports. And just because they didn't understand it, they made fun of it. Christine, you said I was on the cover mm -hmm. of uh, what what thing this morning? Yahoo Sports. There's the it says former ESPN host criticizes gaming again. I actually just googled it too, and you're on the front of fan cited as well. I'm just gonna keep. I am not a friend of esports. Okay. Why are you so again? I just don't understand. Well, it's the same with professional wrestling. It's for booger eaters. It, it, I don't have a I don't have a problem with you watching some pro wrestling, but when people take it so seriously, it's it shouldn't be on a sports network. It's video games. It is by the way, it's not scripted, but to a large degree, there's limitations on what you can do based on the programming, right? Oh, there's probably like codes to unlock cool new stuff oh, too. God. What would you prefer these kids okay, do? Okay, let me though? let me let me ask you. I don't know. Go outside. Thirty million people who play League of Legends. One of the players, he's in the top 300 on the ranked. globe. I mean, right. they're amazingly qualified. And if you think about it, it takes a lot of time to put these leagues together. It makes a lot of sense. Oh, the cramping some... on your thumbs is so painful. <laughs> no, the Future league together, the logistics. <laughs> you guys always mock me. Wait, no, 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 we're not mocking you. But... The cramping on your thumbs. Cramping thumbs on a PC game. Never heard of that before. Luckily, there have always been a few people like this woman who have defended esports. So now what's making all of these sports teams recently start investing into esports? Money talks. Here is Shaquille O'Neal, one of my favorite basketball players actually, and current part-time owner of esports team, Energy. This includes the Energy League of Legends team, Overwatch team, CSGO team, and more. Here is the one and only tweet Shaq made about League of Legends once obtaining his team. And I say it's his only tweet about League of Legends because Energy was relegated later last year and are no longer part of the NALCS. And after Energy was relegated, Shaq never said a word about League of Legends ever again. I don't think he actually, quote, tears down turrets, unquote, in his free time. Or ever, actually. I don't even think Shaq wrote this tweet at all. It's not hard to assume that investors like Shaq aren't investing anything more than their money. As you can see by Shaq not even knowing what's going on with his own team. Tomorrow night on TBS Me Time, here's this tweet, and I need you to explain this to me, Shaq, because you are part owner of, of uh, NRG. So, he has no idea. Uh, <laughs> do you like me to be called this? Just nine and silent. Just Bench nine in and silent have been roster. benched. Why? Why were they benched? Uh, obviously, they weren't performing. Why were they? No, you're part owner. Why were they benched? Okay. First of all, I'm not a micromanager. I don't have all the documents in front of me yet, but however... Are you concerned that these two apparently key members of this team have been benched? You, no, I'm not concerned because you have to step up. If you want to get paid and you want to make it to the next level, you got to step up. Do you got step up? Was it some type of violation of team rules? I bet, I bet if rules? that guy walked in right now who got benched, you wouldn't know him. There's two guys. Well, well, <laughs> of course uh, I know who they are. Well, uh, he has brown hair or uh, blonde hair? Just brown hair, just not no, silent. It's, uh, he's black. Uh, silent. Uh, for y'all people what? at home, what Shaq just good. said was, I don't know. Was this a violation of team rules in Atlanta? Ernie, snitches get stitches. I'm not revealing <laughs> any information to you. There they are right there. I know who they are, and they got to step up. They know. Right. He didn't it's even prize know that money at the end, okay? Uh, you gotta step up. You gotta play well, oh, yeah. like Kevin Love did yesterday. Now, I'm not saying Shaq should know everything, but I think if Stephen Curry is getting benched in Golden State, I'm pretty sure all the owners will be aware of it. But this is not to bash Shaq. I'm just using him as an example of how people in similar positions see esports. They know it's what the kids like and that there's money in it now. So they stop making fun of it and now they invest, hoping they can make an easy buck. Is this the first time a major sports organization makes a League of Legends team? No. This isn't even the first time an NBA team has invested into esports. Last year, the Philadelphia 76ers bought stakes of Team Dignitas and Apex. But what I really want to show you guys is what happens after big sports teams buy into esports. Because that's a question that's genuinely being asked when you see that an organization like the Golden State Warriors are making their own LCS team. For that, we go back to 2016 when European football giant Paris Saint Germain, or PSG for short, bought a spot into the EU LCS Challenger Series. They built a whole team from scratch. 
created hype around their franchise and hired retired LCS player Yellowstar to be the head of esports at PSG. But fast forward to 2017 and slowly the team fell apart and earlier this year in October PSG let go of Yellowstar and announced that they would be stepping away from League of Legends. By the way this whole endeavor didn't come cheap. Reportedly PSG invested 21 million dollars into creating their esports platform and in the end their highest achievement was only coming third in the 2017 EU Challenger Series Spring Split. In their press release after leaving the professional League of Legends scene they explained the reason for leaving by saying quote, As part of our 2018 season's preparation and after much discussion with the game publisher Riot Games, numerous uncertainties remain in our view on the future of the League of Legends esports scene in Europe. The revenue sharing model offered by Riot Games is very far from compensating the cost of a structure with European ambitions. So I'm not capable of seeing how much Riot actually paid them or how much PSG invested. Maybe they invested less than the reported 21 million, maybe more, we don't know. But PSG felt that there wasn't any profit from participating in the EU LCS. And this isn't white and black. Aside from PSG perhaps not performing as great as others, there have still been reports from other teams saying that Riot wasn't paying enough to profit. Earlier this year, Team H2K issued a letter to the League of Legends community saying it will not continue to participate in the European League Championship Series unless Riot Games creates a better financial structure for teams. But PSG was in the EU Challenger Series, and the NBA teams joining the esports world are coming straight to the NA LCS, where anything can happen. Maybe the Golden State Warriors pick up a great Cassiopeia main and then they go all the way to win worlds. So to answer the big question, why are big sports organizations investing to become League of Legends teams? Money talks! Now is this a bad thing? No, actually not really. But I think just people shouldn't get excited when you hear the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be a League of Legends team. Because that doesn't mean that LeBron James is going to get on the PC and pull off some sick mechanics. At the end of the day, the Cavaliers are a company, and someone in a suit decided that there could potentially be more income if they made a league team. Likely without even knowing what League of Legends even is, all they know is that it could make them some money and make them more hip with the kids. So what are the positives and negatives of all this? Well the only negative is that these organizations and personalities are only interested now because there is large amounts of monies involved. But the positives come larger in the end. Even if Shaq doesn't know what he's talking about when he talks about his own team. Make it to the next level, you gotta step up. Team was it, gotta step was up, was it some type of violation I bet, of team I bet rules? if that guy walked in right now who got benched, you wouldn't know. Either. There's two guys. Well, well, of course uh, I know who they are. Well, it, it, he has brown hair or uh, blonde hair? Yeah, just brown hair, just not no, in the it's, He's black. Uh, when someone who doesn't follow esports sees that Shaq is invested into esports, they might earn respect for the scene themselves. Thinking if Shaq thinks this is cool, then maybe it is. And I'm just saying Shaq as an example. This can be any celebrity or big name that's involved himself with an esports team. And for a final example of that, there is retired NBA player and actor Rick Fox who is owner of Echo Fox and is one of the most passionate celebrities supporting esports. Uh, and it's even gone to the point that now the government has acknowledged video professional video gamers uh -huh as athletes. Right, and, and how could that be? And they have been given, I mean, I'm not they're been given, now, now when we talk, when we talk about, so, so, so look, first and foremost, I care about my son and his passion, what and he's, he is stuck, he's, they're, they're, look, they're, we can, I'm not here to yeah, debate say, the level yeah, at which it, but, they fit but, and slot in though. between, you know, between basketball players. They are digital, Athletes, they're professional from, digital from, athletes. Like they're 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 well, no, look, athletes. I mean, you think like about them. look. I think about what it took for me to become a professional athlete. It took right. a lot of a lot of concentration, right. a lot of dedication, practice, preparation, right. stamina. Right. And, and the more I, I watched my son pursue this career, and the more I watched him introduce me to the, the world as it is, which yeah. is professional gaming. Right. They're sponsored, yeah. they, have, oh, yeah. they have careers, yeah, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is, uh, to me, because I love gaming, you know, I play my Diablo, I have all my stuff that I do. Right. And for me, 
it's a great focus. You know, you know, it's lasering in. You, you're there. But I don't know if athlete is the right word that I you, would you go for. You don't break a sweat. I don't consider it oh, no, a sport. Oh, no, you do. You do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> look, I do. I do. Jeff Day. And I look. I love this debate. I mean, we can we can do it. Jeff look, Dave. so I. I so although PSG didn't succeed, I hope that the Cavs or the Warriors do succeed. Even if they aren't in it for the passion of the game, the more big names succeeding in esports will bring more people to understand the world of esports, and that it's not just nerds getting thumb cramps. Well alright guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, click or tap my face to subscribe, and if you'd like to see one of my past videos, click or tap the video to the right. But most of all, Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace.